What should I call you, Eggy? What do you like to be called? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Eggy's Eggy's cool. Yeah, that's fine. All right, awesome. So I do believe that we are now rolling. So welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out. The Other Life Podcast, certainly, almost certainly the coolest podcast on the internet, I would say. And uh, I'm very excited here. I'm here with Eggy. Very excited today to be talking with Eggy. Uh, Eggy's got Glad quite to be interesting- here, Mr. Murphy. It's an honor to be on the Other Life Podcast, which I have heard from at least some sources is the best podcast on the internet. So, wow, very very polite. I appreciate that. That's very kind words. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I'm excited to learn about your uh, Eggy's story. Eggy has a very interesting story for people who maybe have no idea who Eggy is. I'll, I'll, I'm not too educated on Eggy to be honest, but I'll give. I did a little bit of research and I'll give you my best stab at it. And uh, Eggy can clarify any uh, misunderstandings I might have, but my understanding uh-huh. is that Eggy was uh, quite well known in the incel world for quite a while, and uh, in particular, I believe one of his most well-known uh, pieces, if you will, is uh, a long video rant on uh, the black pill and taking the black pill, and uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll go over that. I hope we do. And uh, but since then, uh, Eggy has had quite a, a kind of interesting trajectory. Uh, where now he's he's killing it as a rapper and a streamer and he's doing a bunch of things and uh, my understanding from him is that he is now uh, living full time paying all of his bills doing a kind of ensemble of creative internet activities so I'm just super interested in his story I'm super kind of impressed by Eggy's trajectory and I'm just uh, super curious to learn about him and how he's how he's kind of navigated his way and I'm also interested in his ideas ranging from the the black pill ideas to also seeing if maybe his ideas have evolved at all uh, over his over his personal growth trajectory. So uh, thank you, Aggie. I'm very, very grateful to have you. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tell you, it's it's definitely been a wild ride. You know, a lot of people, they ask me from time to time, they're like, you know, what do you think? You know, what, how do you feel about, you know, how everything's been? And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if my life has always been uh, rainbows and sunshine and happy uh, you know, uh, ear to ear smiles and everything like that. But I will tell you, it definitely probably has been a lot more interesting than it would have been uh, if I had just stayed working at the gas station or whatever for, you know, 30 years until I died of heart failure from eating too many Big Macs or whatever. Yeah. So that's awesome. So let's, let's break this down for people a little bit. Let's go back to um, well, like, when did you first get recognition in the cell community? <laughs> well, you see back when I was doing my thing, you know, we didn't really use that term, you know, more because I was on 4chan. So we're like, we kind of use like, you know, robots would be like, you know, like the, the incel at the time, that was more like only Redditors use that, you know, like we didn't, we didn't mess those Redditors because like, you knew Redditors were like beneath us, you know, like they weren't as cool as us, you know, they didn't have the same kind of culture we did. But I mean, yeah, it all kind of ended up coalescing in the same type of, you know, pool of people but i mean basically how i kind of got known in that type of way was pretty much i was on 4chan at the time this goes back to like 2014 and uh i had been kind of ignoring the world i was working my job i had this place i was staying at i was kind of ignoring everything and playing these japanese video games all day every day well i ended up getting banned one day because i was like you're only supposed to be able to play these games from japan and i was using like a proxy server all this stuff whatever that my account got banned i didn't have everything going on so i ended up browsing 4chan a lot more and I ended up meeting, there was like a meetup thread and it was actually, it wasn't on the meetup board. It was actually on R9K and uh, I ended up meeting a chick and going on my like first real date ever, like in 2014, I was 22. Yeah. I, I wasn't 23 quite yet. So on my, my first real dates with this chick, you know, and, and like we knew the same type of like culture or whatever, you know, whatever you want to say. Uh, and so then I felt pretty good about that and everything was pretty cool but she ended up basically just trashing me and saying I was a loser and whatever. And so then I got kind of pissy and then I was back, you know, I'd already been browsing like full time. So I'm back browsing full time. And there was these like face threads that were going on. And so, you know, I'm curious. I didn't really have a lot of social circle or anything like that. I worked the night shift. I didn't really have anybody that I, you know, talked to outside of work pretty much. So I'm like, well, yeah, let me post a couple of pictures and kind of see what's up. And so when I did at the time, then people were like, damn, this guy's freaky. He's a freaky looking mofo, you know, whatever. And so then I'm like, oh, so, so hmm, that's weird. You know, maybe so that's what's up. That's the problem then. You know, maybe that's why this chick trashed me. And I never really had been successful dating anyway. I'm like, okay, maybe that's why this chick trashed me. So let me see. 
So I would continue, like, as the threads would come around, you know, I started getting to the gym. I, you know, I was still wearing, like, the same clothes I wore in high school. So I got, like, a new wardrobe. I dyed my eyebrows. You know, I was going all in on trying to, like, you know, up my game and really, uh, you know, do my thing to try to, you know, impress the ladies a little more and suck yeah. back and be like, all right, no, it's the new um, people posting faces again. Well, hey, it's just me. It's this guy. I wasn't really identifying myself in any kind of type of way, really, besides my appearance. So I'm like, boom, what's up? You know, boom, what's up? And, and then I was making gains, you know, and everything like that, but it just wasn't really translating into anything successful. So then I would come back and I didn't have, once again, I didn't really have a social outlet of any type. So if I was having some type of thing where I'm talking to some chick and she rejects me or whatever, then I'm also going to be able to go back to the boards and there's going to be somebody talking about something I can relate to in that regard. So I can come back and, you know, vent my frustrations in that regard. It just wasn't really any way for me to do that. You know, like I didn't have any other way to talk about that kind of thing. Or if you try to talk to somebody in real life about that at work, I'm like, oh yeah. So this chick, you know, they're like, they didn't, don't care. <laughs> you know, so, but you know, but, but the, but the right. bros, you know, they, they knew they could relate to those feels, you know? Right. So, and that's 4chan talking about. Yeah. And is so that, that's where you first posted pictures of yourself and kind of learned about how people respond to you, how you look? Pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much how it all kind of, you know, and then, yeah, as time went on, you know, I continued down a path where, I mean, I was improving myself, you know, in these particular aspects, like physically, whatever, you know, fashion, uh, style and things like that. And it wasn't really translating and, you know, it kind of had me defeated and it had me sort of cynical, you know, and then as time went on, you know, it's it kind of kind of continued to progress down this path where, you know, I would, I would, I was always trying to look for the next thing, the next, you know, bit of research or whatever. And then, you know, that's when I kind of ran into like the intersection with like the PUA hate kind of thing where it's like, oh, you know, they're trying to sell you all these tactics, trying to sell you all this nonsense. And it's so much BS, you know, it's so much con going on, so much scamming going on you know, they're trying to sell you the next hottest thing. And it's not, it's not the real deal. You know, you look at the, these, you know, the dating experiments and stuff from back then where you'd have a guy who, you know, would like was doing all that stuff and he tried to do his thing and he got shot down and then he'd come back with like a fake profile picture uh, off of like some guy's Instagram that was like a model or whatever and say the same thing to the same chick, you know, and she'd be sending them all like her tits and everything like that, you know, within five seconds. And so he's like, well, this is, you know, it's a, all this is a scam. It's a whole lot of BS, a whole lot of, you know, and that's just kind of it's and to be honest even at that time it was sort of like a i feel like at some parts of it for me were like a surface level kind of uh examination but i mean really though like because when i was doing like the black pill video and everything like that you know i had a very particular kind of thing in mind with like you know interpersonal relations deteriorating and quality of life deteriorating for the average person you know the just so many options and things for the average guy that just weren't you know, they were just kind of like shrinking down or atrophying, everything like that. And I had that particular interpersonal relations, you know, vision in my mind when I was kind of going about it. But I mean, really, it, you know, it's, it is an interconnected thing where you have like if interpersonal relations and this sort of social side of things is deteriorating, you know, I mean, it's sort of just like, I felt in time that it was representative of a larger issue among you know other different areas in life and and how things are functioning right. in our society so so it, yeah. so what i'm hearing is that you tried to do a bunch of self improvement and it wasn't really getting the results that you had been led to believe it would get you is that fair to say pretty much yeah i mean and, and you know and i'll be you know fairly completely honest you know throughout my life i mean i have had issues with commitment and motivation and stuff too. You know, I've never been a perfect guy, but what I was looking at at the time, you know, when I was in the mix of these things, I kind of felt like, you know, where I was at, I mean, I was younger than I am now, more in shape than I am now. I had, you know, basically my own place. I mean, you know, it was a house that I had and I was paying the mortgage on it. It pretty much was like, it was kind of a little bit of a convoluted situation, but I pretty much had my own house and my own car and a job that was pretty decent for my area was night shifts. You got pay paid more. And so that wasn't always the greatest mm. thing to have to work nights. Yeah. And I eventually got really sick of it. <laughs> but, sure. uh, you know, and how old are you now? Considered, was that? How old are you now? I'm currently 28. So when I did, like, when I did like the black pill video, I was 23. So, you know, and that was about it was just shy of five years now. It'll be five years in August since I 
made that video. Right. And so just to kind of summarize it for people, from what I got from the video, the basic message is sort of like, guys, don't even bother trying to fix yourselves. It's all, it's all bullshit. They're just trying to get you to have confidence and sell you things. And really the reality is, you know, you, you, and, and correct me wherever I'm wrong, Eddie, but you seem to be saying in the video that, you know, pretty much the, the, uh, dating outcomes and life outcomes are kind of highly predetermined and rigidly, uh, set by kind of genetic gifts essentially. And anyone who tells you otherwise is lying to you and trying to sell you something. And you pretty much, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it was a pretty black pill that you delivered. I think that's why it was quite, uh, uh, quite widely shared because you were pretty much saying, look guys, there's, there's no way to fix yourself. There's no way out. And, uh, if you're, you know, ugly or not having luck with ladies or whatever, you know, just accept it, take the black pill. There, there's no hope anywhere. And is that fair to say, or would you add or subtract anything from that? Well, I mean, you know, looking at back at it now, you know, at the time I definitely was like, and not to say, you know, <clears throat> it's, I have more nuance about it now, but I mean, definitely at the time I feel like I was really like, you know, all the way pedal to the metal, like full in, you know, uh, like, <clears throat> you know, and to be fair, once again, with the nuance added to it, I mean, there is still, there's always improvement that can be made. And this is kind of where like, cause basically I came back to it. And I think I want to say like late 2016, early 2017, after I'd had a lot of turmoil in my personal life, I kind of came back to it and I'm like, well, you know, you, there's a lot we can still do in our own lives, you know, that away from interpersonal relationships. And there's still a lot of things you can do to, uh, you know, fulfill yourself in your own personal life. That's, you know, not related to, you know, but also at the same time, I had to go through a tumultuous, complicated and ultimately very messy relationship and breakup to kind of like get that in my own head. Because, you know, up to that, I had never had like a serious long term relationship or anything like that. I mean, I had right. had some things, some things and flings, you know, up to that point. But it okay. was like there was no nothing, you know, I, did, I hadn't had I didn't have like that. So that's why I say like afterwards, I gained a little bit of nuance and it, I think it did help me grow a little bit to go through all that uh, relationship and breakup that I went through. Okay. Realize, you know, like it wasn't, but at the same time though, I mean, it is still pretty much like a fundamental truth that, you know, cause there's guys who I know that go through a lot of self-improvement and that's great and that's phenomenal. And I always support that to the fullest, but you know, if you're a guy who's, in your twenties and getting to it then and there, and you've gone through your formative years in the education system and had a lot of bad experiences and didn't really have a good social circle. Didn't really have a lot of these good things. It's like, there's more that that's like inside of you that you got to kind of work on and try to, you know, fix. I mean, going back to using myself as an example, again, you know, somebody who was kind of antisocial. I mean, before I got into the live streaming and all that stuff like that, I mean, I talked very differently uh, my energy was just a lot uh, different. I had to go through and, you know, through a lot of <laughs> just hours and hours and hours of live streaming and conversating and things that I was not really used to. And I didn't really have an outlet to do it due to, uh, you know, lack of social uh, outlets or whatever, social circle, so on and so yeah, on. Definitely. I didn't really have any good way to do that, to like to, to work on that muscle, so to speak, you know, uh, yeah. and then which, you know, I was very thankful that I ended up giving streaming and everything to try to that, you know, help me improve in that regard. And, and interesting. Okay. But, so, so yeah. your ideas on the black pill evolved somewhat, but did I more or less accurately characterize the message of the video at that time, how you were feeling at that time? Basically, Pretty no, much, yeah, all. Like give up, give up all totally, hope. <laughs> the system yeah. is, is screwed. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, it, 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 yeah, you're, you're right. And I think even at the time there could have been more nuance applied to it. But I mean, I was, I uploaded that on a YouTube channel that had like a hundred subscribers. I was getting like five views on a video. So I never thought that it would even go like that. I pretty much right. made it like just spontaneous spur of the moment due to people that I was talking with at the time that were just kind of getting on my nerves because they kept on telling me, well, oh, well, you know, this guy, you know, Danny DeVito's got a wife. Stop. You know, what are you talking about? Danny DeVito, he's got a <laughs> wife and, uh, the, the, the midget from Austin Powers, he's got whatever, like all this stuff like that. And I'm like, the <laughs> exception, you know, like that's, that's exceptional. You know, here's some data about, you know, <laughs> here's right. my gotcha. studies. 
Gotcha. You know, and, graphs, you know. And am I am um, I right that that was kind of your break on the internet? That was what got you notoriety and a following. Well, yeah. Well, see what happened was so I made the video, and it's you know it blew up crazy. Like like I said, I had like 100 subscribers on YouTube. I was getting maybe a few views. There's the archive channel now, the first last archive channel where it's got like all these old. I used to just like record a video about anything because nobody was going to watch it really anyway. Right. So I just, I have like random five second videos of me like yelling or whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, I remember I actually have a few screenshots still saved somewhere, but I just remember waking up like a couple days later and my phone had sent me a notification from the YouTube app saying, Oh, your video has been viewed over 10,000 times or something like that. And I mean, I like freaked out. Like I was like, I really <laughs> freaked out crazy. I think yeah. when I, cause I ended up terminating the YouTube channel. I had like, I gained like 1200 subscribers or something like that within a week. And the video had like 40,000 views or something in a week. And the attention was unlike anything I'd ever had in my entire life. And it was so overwhelming and it was so stressing. And so whatever that I just deleted the entire channel. Oh, really? It was a guy who archived it. So it almost was that the video didn't even, you know, Oh wow! it was almost all gone forever. And actually, even after that all went down, if I recall correctly, I think the archived video, I think it had like 10,000 views or something like that. But then you had the Oregon situation where I was blamed for that shooting. And people, you know, once they heard it was me, they found the videos online and they shared the videos all over Facebook and Twitter and everything like that. So then in that, within like one day of that happening, uh, then the Blackpool video had like 100,000 views like the next day. And so then that, that kind of, so oh, it was wait, like, okay. I got this first little thing which overwhelmed me. I deleted it all. Somebody archived it. And then it was kind of sitting there. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't all that, but it was still just kind of sitting there. Then you had the shooter situation. So everybody's looking, Oh, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Even though I didn't do it. So tell that story real quick. uh, How did you get blamed for that? How did you get blamed for the shooting? Basically I was out (laughs) in the Pacific Northwest. I was on a trip I kind of was just on a trip to just kind of ease my mind because, like, you know, I just been through all the black pill stuff, or whatever, like that. And I was trying to find something to sort of, uh, you know, I need some like escape. I need, I need a change of scenery. I was just trying to find anything to sort of like get me into a better mood, pretty much. Sure. So I was on a trip out there, and um, I had been staying outside of Seattle. I was in Linwood, and I posted this YouTube video. I'm like, oh hey, I'm out in Seattle right now. Uh, you know, if there's anybody from like 4chan or whatever that's you know knows me, that's in the area you know, Hey, and I think I just post, I think I recorded that video. This is when, uh, what was that site? Vid me. I think it was, it was it, like, cause vid me turned into like a YouTube clone, but at first vid me was like Imgur for video. So you could like, just take a, like a short video and upload it on this and then like post the link. Okay. So I think that's what it was. Cause it got take, it was, it was posted onto like the archive channel. Cause the guy was like kind of keeping tabs on me. So if I even did like a little vid me video, he would download that and put it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. It's like an archive thing. Uh, so that video was, that was what that was. And then while I was out there, then that there was in Portland at, or not, no, I'm sorry, Umpqua, the Umpqua shooting. So, but it was in Oregon as, which I guess I was relatively close to, but basically, yeah. So uh, this happened out there. And once it happened, people knew that I was in the kind of in the general area. And so they started sending all my information to all the major news outlets they didn't check it with me. They just decided to run with it and say, Oh yeah, look at this guy. Look at his YouTube videos. He's a lunatic. He's obviously a crazed murderer. Look at him. Look, he's obviously this guy right here. So they just ran with it. <laughs> That's so fucked up. And I didn't know about it until I just happened to be, uh, cause like I said, I'd actually, I drove, I drove out. So I drove out to see like the Seattle area. And so I was getting an oil change and stuff at the Midas auto shop, you know, just chilling out there uh, waiting <laughs> yeah. for that to get done. And so I go to browse 4chan and I open it up. And there's like 15 different threads posted that the original post is my picture, you know? And I'm like, hmm, that's a little bit interesting. That's a little different. But even at that time, I didn't really realize exactly what was going on. It actually took for me to leave the area. I got my oil changed and everything done, gassed up. And I started heading out and I started leaving and driving back east. And I drove for a while. And then I got to the first rest stop where I went to go take a leak. And I went to check my Snapchat and, uh, you know, my Snapchat, you know, I had like some people from 4chan on there, whatever, but it wasn't like that much. But all of a sudden I was added by like 30 different people that I'd never heard of. So I started accepting the ad requests and it's Fox News, NBC, because this is, I didn't have social media. I didn't have Twitter. I didn't have that stuff. 
Instagram, any of that. This is my only huh. social media tech or you know, I call Snapchat social media. So hmm. they're all adding me into like, oh, call Fox News right now. Call NBC right now. Are you killing people? Are you shooting people right now? We need to know. We need to know. Uh, so then, yeah, that, that tweet's still up from Tom Winter. I retweeted from time to time, but he was the one, he was the first guy who like I added it and said, call Fox News right now or call NBC right now or whatever. So I call him up and I'm like, oh no, I'm here, dude. What's up? And he's like, okay, okay. We had the confirmation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then, then he tweeted it out saying, oh, he's alive. He's alive. We know he's alive. So that was kind of like, that kind of kicked it up a little bit. Um, so were those were those just 4chan people playing a prank on you or did people really think you were the shooter? No, I mean, if, as far as I know, it was just like, oh, let's see if the news is stupid enough that they'll take the bait. So it was basically like for, okay. So it was like your buddies on 4chan just fucking with the media. Well, <laughs> I would say, I mean, they didn't like me. You know, I was seen as like attention seeking because I posted my face and YouTube videos and stuff like that. So it was kind of like, uh, it wasn't like a buddy thing. It was like, hey, fuck that guy. You know, let's let's see if, you know, let's see if we can get him fucked up a little bit off this uh, okay. situation. You know, which I mean, to be honest, if, if it had gone differently, I mean, you know, if I'd happened to be in the area or something like that, I mean, the cops could have blew my head off or some shit. You know, so, I mean, like it could have gone worse but uh wow you know, okay and and if you don't mind me asking i'm curious like in these episodes uh especially when you're accused of the shooting and you're in mass media are you in your personal life are you in a bad place mentally and with with your own self or were you in a relatively because it sounded like you went to the west coast to kind of get away a little bit and relax so it sounds like maybe you were already maybe not in the best place like how are you responding to to this rather atrocious attention well i basically decided i mean my knee jerk reaction to it was like, Oh, this is just so ridiculous that I'm not even going to, you know, I basically just told all the journalists and stuff out of me. I'm like, screw you. You're, you're a jackass. Screw you. <laughs> they were asking me like, Oh, can we get you? We want a story in the New York times or whatever. We want to do these interviews. We want to da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, screw you. Screw you. So, I mean, I could have like tried to play it up if I want, but I didn't right. want that attention. Like that wasn't even I mean, I don't know. I guess I have attention. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, maybe, maybe like low key, I guess maybe I have wanted attention, but, but you didn't time, play it, but you didn't play it up. No, I was like, I basically sold him straight up. I'm like, no, thank you. Get away. Just screw off. You know, you should all be ashamed of yourselves for, for not fact checking. This is before the whole Trump and fake news and that, you know, I, I just, so I was like taken aback and I was just like, this is just very, very disgraceful, you know? And I basically just told yeah. them all piss off pretty much. I mean, I kind of, uh, I mean, I knew I didn't do anything. It wasn't like I did anything bad yeah. and, you know, uh, but I guess at the time, I don't really seem to recall stressing about it too much is, is the years have gone by. There's been t from time to time where I do get a little bit anxious about certain aspects of everything. Uh, but at that time though, I don't seem to recall. I was just trying to like, you know, not really pay attention to it. I'm like, you're wrong. You guys are wrong. Now I'm going to get back to what I'm doing in life. Yeah. Right on. So how do you ultimately transition from that to developing a creative career? Well, I mean, basically at the time, even before all this stuff went down, you know, I mean, I, I was, I was messing around with like rap and stuff a little bit. I mean, but I was, I hadn't found like my voice really yet. You know, like the way that I sort of developed myself as I did a lot of live streaming and sort of built up my energy and my, how I kind of carry myself. I wasn't really on that yet, but I mean, back in like 2015, I founded the ugly gang, which was like a paper bag with like, with like sunglasses and stuff. And I still use a little bit of that iconic iconography, whatever, but it pretty much kind of like, I kind of moved past it a little bit. So I don't really talk about it too much anymore, but mm -hmm. you know, I got this microphone that I am using still right now. I got this back in 2013 to try and do like vocal covers and different stuff like that, because I was just curious. I always had an affinity for music. I just wasn't very good. <laughs> so, but I like, but I wanted to, you know, I wanted to try and do, uh, better about it so I mean I'm trying to think uh, when it came to like rap and, and all that type of stuff you know I had been in poetry and loving poetry ever since I was a little kid you know I used to do like poetry competitions I used to like send stuff in to sweepstakes for poetry and all the different type of stuff I was always really into that and then also growing up you know I grew up poor and I had issues growing up I was you know I was kind of a punk kid you know I'd got into bad stuff and whatever i was just i was running around in the streets and sure same. doing different stuff like that so i mean yeah. like i was kind of just into 
the rap and hip hop and everything like that from a young age. And then like my love of poetry from like an even younger age, it all kind of came together. So I always really liked rap and everything to do with it, you know, and I actually, when I graduated high school, I never was going to go to college. I got a, I got a, like a drum pad and I got like a keyboard and stuff. And I actually did like, I actually made beats and stuff at first. Cause I, I knew some guys who were like independent artists. And so I tried to like kind of get in on that, but it was just sort of, you know, you had the YouTube and everything going on at the time. This was like the end of the uh, 2000, you know, before 2010, it was kind of like, you know, before the decade kind of took off. Now it's just, it seems like it's been a different game over the last few years, but at the time it was still, it was like, it wasn't ready for what I had in my mind yet. I don't know. Like yeah. <laughs> it was right just on. kind of a different atmosphere. You know, everybody was like talking about the Illuminati and everybody's, you know, like it was all this like underground, like very, very particular kind of like conscious stuff. And I, I like that stuff and it was cool and everything at the time. But, you know, it was like really when like Chief Keith came out and like he kind of launched like the new wave, you know, like with Cardi and, you know, and like all that type of it was like a different type of like melodic, a little more kind of, you know, not just so much like it's got to be all straight facts all straight gritty you know everything all the time yeah. kind of just expanded the the palette a little bit so like you know where more people were experimenting creatively with stuff and that kind of I felt like that kind of opened me up in a leeway not that I've done everything that's you know I've, I've but I've always been about experimenting with different sounds okay you know, right more on. than anything it's not that I'm just sitting here and trying to do this particular kind of sound all the time just to get projects out just to get like streaming money whatever like i want to do stuff because i want to try and experiment with different sounds that i like to hear so hell yeah right on and so when do you, when exactly did, did you go from just a random guy who's kind of tinkering with this stuff to feeling like you realize oh okay people are actually listening to me and i have something here like when did that happen right so it's funny because you know pretty much i you know i had the whole 4chan stuff and i pretty much kind of like separated from 4chan then like in 20 uh, end of 2015 like even before all this stuff was down because people were just kind of said well you're kind of like they didn't like me for being an attention seeker or whatever and i totally understood that so i made that decision yes i you know let's just kind of go our separate ways you know i still obviously like to enjoy the uh, site but i wasn't going to be doing like what i was doing uh so but then you know i was still on youtube and so then i kind of dabbled in streaming in 2016 it had its ups and downs. You know, I got, I, I slept on a stream one time and then somebody called the police and said that I was overdosing on drugs. So all of a sudden I was sleeping and I woke up to my door getting fucking hammered down by the police. And I had thousands of viewers on the, <laughs> on that channel. Uh, it is funny when that happened in July, 2016, that was uh, the most subscribers I gained on that channel throughout the whole time I had that channel. And I had, and I had like 300, 400 videos on that channel before it got banned. Uh, but YouTube doesn't need to know that. Any any channel I've ever had since then is owned by my manager, not me. Uh, anyway, um, but then I got into the streaming. And once I got into the streaming full time, which was started in the beginning of 2017, I wanted to really try and do live streaming seriously. So J January of 2017, I streamed. I was working at the time. But even with my job, I still made sure to stream eight hours a day, every single day for the whole month. Wait, and, and is was, this talking start, like, or gaming online. or exactly. both? Is it talking or gaming or both? When I was doing it at the time, uh, we had a mix. I don't, it's, it was, it would sort of be like a mixture of, uh, we would do just conversation, uh, video gaming, and we would do like YouTube. It was like, it was kind of like YouTube reactions, I guess. I don't like to use that term because I don't really like watch these channels, but people would be like, oh, you got to watch this video. And they would just send me a video and I just watch it. And, you know, and I guess okay. I, it wasn't like I, played it as oh youtube reaction let's go you know i would just be like all right what's up oh you got a video what's up let me check it out you know I, so you weren't you weren't like you, were, you weren't like preaching any particular philosophy you're just kind of hanging out on stream eight hours a day pretty much well it was like if i was preaching any kind of philosophy it was sort of like you know i had been through so much bullshit and so much negativity uh it was like all positivity all day like you know i might have had a couple times over the 30 days where i felt a little down but I was like, I want to just be all about, let's do better. I wanted to just, that, that was the only way to me that I felt that I was going to be able to overcome the sort of pain and stuff that I had in my past. I was like, if I hold on to this stuff and like keep these grudges and like hold this stuff down, like nothing's ever going to change. So I'm just going to wipe it all away. I'm going to like totally go clean slate with my 
preconceptions about things and I'm just going to go all the way in and just like all good vibes all the time. Interesting. Interesting. So I guess that's where the nuance with respect to the black pill comes in that you, you changed a lot between the black pill video and this time, I guess you, you did uh, kind of embrace the, the fact that you could adopt a more affirmative and creative attitude towards life and that that could actually really work to uh, create new possibilities. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was just like, and I guess, I mean, I, it was, it had streaming, I guess, I don't know, like it is an outlet once again, like even going back to, cause YouTube videos have been an outlet for me cause I didn't have anything to have an outlet like that in my uh, day-to-day life. And so the YouTube videos were an outlet. And then when I got into live streaming, I figured out, I kind of got it set up and, you know, really tried my hand at it to a greater extent Then yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I got into the rhythm of it eventually, which it helped that, you know, I got into it, you know, we'd have like, 10, 15 people that would be like on a stream. And so then I got sort of in the tune of just like talking to those people. And I would just sit there and there were times where I would talk until I was hoarse, you know, I would sit there and just talk for hours until I basically went hoarse and through doing those kind of things and getting into that cycle of, you know, repetition to have that, it was enjoyable for me, lucrative to, you know, to a fair degree and everything just kind of was cool with it. So I'm like, Hey, yeah, this is is pretty, pretty swell. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. So you're really putting in the work. You're putting in hours, serious hours every day. Yep. Yeah. Well, like it it was, yeah, it was like, it it was funny. It was like January 2nd or 3rd of that year, but I had a YouTube video that got recommended to me about this guy and he's talking about all this money he made off YouTube ads. And it wasn't about like the money for me necessarily, but I was in a kind of a tough situation where I was like, you know, maybe, maybe it's, worth giving it a shot you know i'm like you know let's just see what's up and so yeah i was like i announced it on like the third or something on my youtube channel I'm like all right i'm doing 30 days eight hours a day let's go and then i started it like three days later and just you know and like and, every okay. single day there would always be like some event that happened like every single day because when you're sitting there for eight hours you know there might be like some video comes out about something that's oh now we're, or this is on the news today so we're talking about this today or, you know, people are having some kind of life issues. So we're going to talk about that. You know, it was just kind of whatever came up. Right on. Like starting that stream and, you know, whatever happened and was going on. About how many subscribers do you have at that time? Um, I mean, I, I think I had about 2,000. But, you know, as far as like active uh, viewers and stuff on the streams at the time, you know, like if we had like 60 people on the stream, that was like a pop in stream, you know. But okay. we had, there was right. times where people, like, if we were going into something really crazy, if there was, like, some real crazy stuff going on, then people would, like, go and post about it on 4chan, and that would draw on a few more people. Not that I sent them there, but they would just do it anyway, because, like, oh, hey, it's this 4chan guy. You know this guy. Yeah, he's doing a live stream. Yeah. So then it might get to, like, I think at the time, uh, my my viewer record was, like, um something like a hundred and something like that. We might've hit, maybe hit 200 at some point at whatever. But uh, now like as of sometime earlier this year, I think my viewer record was like 14 or 1500, but that's not also, that's also not like normal for me necessarily. It's usually, I mean, it's been up to like regularly on average, like a couple hundred people at a time or whatever now, which is plenty for me because I, it's hard for me to even keep up with that amount of people. So, cause I like to just sit and talk a lot so I yeah kind of get off track as you might yeah I, I can relate to that for sure actually speaking of which we got a super a little super chat here from alex johnson uh who says tell eggy i said what's up and uh, i love you yeah. i love My you too AJ. justin i know that man right there shout out to aj thanks alex uh, i appreciate <laughs> I, I appreciate the super chat now this reminds me I, i'd be curious at this time how much money are you making on youtube because i don't make shit on youtube <laughs> and like i like right now for instance we have about 84 people watching uh you know, I have like 6,000 and a half subscribers, uh, but I make, I make virtually nothing from YouTube. So how, how much money are you making on YouTube at that time? Well, at the time, the reason why I decided to, cause at the time, so I'm working my job. I was working at a grocery store for minimum wage. Now I was, I have grown up, you know, I was a delinquent. I was in special education. You know, they basically said I was like, you know, equivalent IQ of like a vegetable. They said I was probably going to be like in a home my whole life. So I'd always work like minimum wage pretty much my whole life, you know, Unless I was working night shift, then I was able to make some more money. But it was just, you know, I worked night shift from 2013, 2014, 2015 until like spring 2016. And it just took such a toll on me, you know, like mm-hmm. it's all sweet when you first start. But anyway, 
Yeah. But yeah, when I was working this, I was basically making like minimum wage still. And it was just, you know, it was like, it just kind of felt like treading water. I mean, there's nothing wrong, you know, it was nothing yeah. like bad about it, but I mean, it, there was no advancement. It was just sort of like, it felt very stagnant to me. And like, it just sort of had a cage on my soul. I'm like, Oh, this is it. This is bag groceries until I die. This is what's up. Oh, you know, it's, but when I streamed that month, when I did like 30 days, eight hours a day, I made a few thousand dollars that month. Is that from super chats? I, 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 no, I've never done super chats. I don't, I mean, for me, so I, where's the money coming from then ads? No, just like straight up donations. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Right. That, that whole, I, I, I know that whole play. So, okay. So that worked well for you then for that time is, yeah. do you think that you, do you think that you make more on YouTube from donations when you're streaming like super hardcore like that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. The thing about it is like, I don't even like to, you know, I for me personally, like when I look at it, like, from a monetary standpoint, you know, I get, people will give me shit about this because they're like, oh, you know, we don't care. You're like, just do stuff. We want to <laughs> see you do some shit and we'll send you money or whatever. We'll yeah. support it. But then for me, like, I've always had this feeling where like, I don't, it's like, oh, internet stuff, you know, like, oh, you know, it's money for internet stuff. It just, yeah. like, I always felt like it was like, it wasn't real work and it wasn't really like, you know, worth that. But what mm. I would say in my experience comparatively, you know, like if I have a set schedule, I'm going to be streaming these hours on these days, you know, and I stick to that or whatever, you know, then that's definitely like the most money there. But also at the same time, if you're just trying to put in maximum hours for like maximum money, I mean, that could maybe, you know, you, I'm not going to say that's not going to work, but mm -hmm. you're also going to, you know, it's at some point, you know, like it's, it's, if you have just like a regular schedule and you kind of do like a few hours here on a regular basis, I think that's just as good as doing like, you know, eight hours a day every day, because eventually it kind of just draws kind of gets drawn out, you know, to where it's not going to be like, you know, right. maybe you're putting in a lot of extra hours and it's not even as much entertaining because it kind of gets boring, a little boring, a little drawn out. And then so like, yeah, you know, people aren't as engaged or interested, you know, then it's just not going to be like as, uh, lucrative, no. but I mean, yeah, it's all about consistency, which I'm terrible at. <laughs> it's uh, all about, you know, coming and, and doing what people, you know, like if you're just doing some weird, boring stuff too, like you, you got to give people what they want, you know, like they're, they're, they are your owners. They control you, yeah. you know, they, they will make and break you. And so that's what I've always said, you know, every single time I do any stream, I always make sure, you know, I give a few minutes at the end of every single stream to thank everybody that had watched and gone off everybody that was there now and anybody that's going to watch the future. Cause I'm like, you know, that's, yeah, that's cool for everything that I have going on. You know I mean? Like I'm just some guy <laughs> who has never been oh, yeah. that great at uh, a whole lot in life, you know, but a lot of people uh, have, you know, given me support and, and uh, approval or, you know, whatever the thumbs up. And, and so I always, you know, feel like I owe them for, for that. Yeah, no, that's, those are good. Those are good tips. Actually. That's, that's pretty practical too, because um, yeah, I mean, I also am super grateful for all my viewers. I think what's interesting is something I've observed or a theory of mine is that when you're doing live stream where you're just talking to the audience, uh -huh. I think that is much better for getting donations. Cause like I mostly do interviews on my live stream every now and then I'll do solo ones, but I have found that when I'm doing interviews, I'm kind of ignoring the chat a little bit respectfully, just because I'm trying to focus on the conversation with the person. So since I don't give the chat like a ton of uh, direct constant attention, I think they don't really feel very motivated to give me super chats and stuff like that. But if you're just talking to the audience in a solo live stream, then it's like more fun for them to give super chats is my theory. Cause I feel like those solo ones I've done, they do get more super chats. So this is just not to talk about myself. It's for people who are interested in this kind of thing. Right. Yeah. For me, Cause I've had, I could have done super chats, like even up to like a few years. I mean, I've always had, cause they used to, what do you know, like a thousand subs or whatever. I need to be like approved for monetization or whatever it is. Right. For me, like my choice to not do super chat was because like, I know that YouTube kind of gets cut off it. And even like, cause I've streamed on Twitch and stuff. So I haven't streamed on Twitch for like about a year now, but I mean, I did time on Twitch and stuff too like that. And for me, it's like, you know, just sort of the way I approach things, I never put ads on my YouTube channel because I, I like, I'm kind of like an anti social little bit guy. You know, I don't like the big corporations and I don't like, you know, I don't want them to eat, even if it's a few cents or whatever. Like that's how yeah. it's, it's kind of like my little, my little protest, you know, I'd be like, Hey, no, Verizon is not getting my five cents off of you guys. I'm turning, there's no ads on this. You know, like, I don't want to do super chat cause YouTube's going to take some off it. And I don't like YouTube cause they have, 
you know, I've had my disagreements with them. They want to put, you know, talk shows on every page and everything like that. And all these late night Colbert, da, 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 whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want to give them, you know, but at the same yeah. time that people get mad, they're like, no, I, this is how I, I have this just like, oh, how do I support? I want to support. And I'm like, yeah, I have to tell people sometimes I'm like, Hey, just for you to be here smashing that like button and all that stuff, you know, that means more than anything in the world to me. So, right but on. yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely, invest in yourself you know i mean yeah my green screens my green screen is a little wonky you know you kind of see all the wrinkles and stuff and i've had this green screen for a few yeah, years i like how, i like how you have a green screen but you're not using it as a green screen it's just a green yeah. background <laughs> for, the, for the audience this is the first time i've ever done a zoom call so i'm not super uh knowledgeable about how this works but yeah oh, that's cool that's cool but yeah it's yeah. funny uh yeah so okay at this time then you're making a few thousand a month did you say streaming at that time, it, it, it depends on how much uh, or how much work I'm doing, how consistent I am. You know, it's it's totally dependent on that. You know, I don't I don't do like Patreon or anything like that. You know, because I feel like there's times where I'm not as consistent, and so I don't want to like say, oh hey, pledge your money or whatever, and then people might forget about it and they're charging like ten dollars a month, and I might be off, you know, doing something yeah you know, else or whatever. So I kind of keep it tethered to my output and then also with the music and stuff like that especially since i've gotten more recognition i mean there's been times where i could contribute to a song and i might get paid 300 or whatever for you know for for contributing to a song or i might i might sometimes i'll do it for free you know it just depends on you know i, I just yeah it, but it's about consistency it's about you know investing in yourself making sure that you're bringing what you want to bring to the table and that you're doing what you should be doing Hell yeah. And, uh, and sticking to it and staying at it. Hell yeah. And then right a little on. bit of luck, uh, of course, as well. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, so that's the story with the streaming and was there a moment where you felt like the rap stuff was starting to gain some noticeable traction in a new way or was that just slow and gradual? How did that work? Well, so I mean, I started off like, you know, on my first YouTube channel, but I was just doing like, you know, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing pretty much. I just had my microphone and I was just doing kind of silly stuff and it wasn't, uh, anything too good at all. Uh, but then I came into it and I kind of improved myself a little bit towards like the end of 2015. I did a few songs and then like, and those songs for the, at the time, you know, for the audience that I had, which was kind of small people were like, Oh, Hey, you know, this is, uh, I don't think you're going to be a rapper, but Hey, you know, it's, it's an improvement though. And then, you know, when I came back in 2017, I did that song sun in the sky, which was like, I think in like March, 2017 or something like that. And then people were like, oh, you know, okay, now this is something, this is more serious. And I did the Stevie Steve song about a month later and Stevie Steve at that time, that like that really took off, you know, like that, like that did like over five digit views. I did uh, F Bill Nye that did a lot of views too, whatever. But I mean, it was always like relatively consistent to what I was doing at the time. And then uh, 2018, I pretty much, I was really depressed and I, got really took up drinking and I didn't really do much of anything for a lot of 2018 music or streaming, you know, for like months. So I had like, I hadn't done, I think I put out a song in like February, 2018. And I came back with the Alec Manassian song, then September 23rd, 2018. And that just went so crazy, obviously, you know, and just like, you know, that, that really blew everything up for, for, for sure. I definitely, how did, how did that, change? Worse, that, definitely, how did that uh, change the game for you? Like, what did that look like? Well, I mean, you know, people knew what I did, you know, they knew, but I had never done anything like that. I had never done like, you know, I never tried to come like with an aggressive type of song like that or whatever. So I just did it because there was a guy who wanted me to do an aggressive song for his mixtape or whatever. And then he wanted, this is a guy who I'd known for years and he wanted to tr give rap and a try, but he wanted to do like aggressive, like, cause he listened to like XXX Tentacion, like the, you know, like that, you know, like that kind of song. I'm like, all right, well, let me see what's up. I'll just find like looked up aggressive beat on YouTube found this Russian guy, you know, and so he was the one who produced it, you know, and he like, he was a small channel. So I just got the beat from him for like a low, you know, he pretty, pretty much charged me like nothing for it, you know? So I'm like, oh, let me just see a little, little vocal exercise. Let me see what's up here. And so I went and recorded the song, you know, pretty much, you know, in within like 15 minutes or whatever. And I'm like, oh man, I didn't think it was like, oh, this is like, this is like, this is crap. This is like it. I, like, how are you going to listen to this? This is like, this is not something that is pleasant to listen to, but let me just put it up on Twitter and, you know, for just, just to let people know I'm doing something. So I put it up on Twitter and then I come back, I went to the store and I came back like 30 minutes later and sat down on my computer, I had like 300 notifications on that tweet. And I'm like, Oh, and then all of a sudden yeah, I was like, boom, it was it just went crazy. It was like wildfire. 
And then, and I didn't even have a YouTube at the time. I actually came back to YouTube October of 2018 because there was a guy, Prim Inc., who made a video about me on his YouTube and it went really viral, got like a million views. So then I got a bunch of followers on Twitter after that. That's when I came back to YouTube then to kind of address people who were like trying to find out where I was at. So then now had that, I've had that YouTube since uh, late uh, 2018 now. But yeah, it was kind of, that kind of reignited me because basically yeah, through a lot of 2018, I was like, oh, I gave up. You know, I had, I lost a lot of my steam. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, I'm just gonna sit around and drink cheap liquor all day and play Chinese private server World of Warcraft, you know, in my bed and just, you know, basically give up on everything. But then, yeah, I kind of just lit a fire under me then because it was just like so much going on. I felt like I needed to stick my head back out and be like, oh, hey, what's going on, everybody? So right on. So did you make a concerted effort to kind of clean up your act? Well, I mean, it's, well, I mean, like clean up. I mean, I, I don't know. Like your I've, life, uh, I mean, because you said you were in a in a low spot. <laughs> I don't mean your act like your musical act. Did you clean right. up? Did, did you make a concerted effort to uh, kind of get back on track and and pursue the opportunities that were unfolding? I mean, I did. Yeah, I think I stuck through it. I mean, I'm trying to think. Lately now, like if you look at my YouTube right now, like I've only done, I haven't done very much uh, with like since like the lockdown and stuff like that. that. That kind of like knocked some of the wind out of my sails because yeah. this last run that I had like up till now, I, I kind of like last July, I kind of sputtered out a little bit. I was kind of getting like down on myself again. But then in August of last year, then Dick Masterson brought me to, open up for his show in Minneapolis. So I got to perform at a real deal venue in front of a, you know, a full audience, like at a real venue and all that stuff oh, like nice. that. So then that momentum had, had me kind of going and everything was kind of going pretty relatively well. Uh, and then, yeah, like once the Corona, everything kind of, I was supposed to be like touring around and doing some shows around in the U S and so, and it was like, ah, and then everything kind of just got whoosh, knocked oh, out. Damn. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of just like, well, yeah, I mean, and it wasn't even so much different from like when my, my daily life was pretty much kind of just chilling here anyway. It mm -hmm. wasn't like I was going out every single day or anything, but you know, just kind of like to have the stuff I was building towards kind of get swept, you know, it kind of did knock a little bit of the wind out of my sails, but I mean, it nothing has been quite as bad as like, as my 2018 was that really just kind of like, I gave up on everything for, for months. Uh, and even now when I haven't been streaming as much and stuff like that, I've still been working on some music or doing like some stuff like this where I'm still like talking to people from time to time, but it's just, yeah, it's sort of like, I, it's, I'm not as on the straight, narrow focused, you know, type of path as I could, should be. Um, but yeah, it's, hey, well, <laughs> it kind of, yeah. it kind of comes and goes, I guess it kind of just, yeah. uh, I mean, you seem like you're doing pretty well for yourself. I'm curious, like with the different things that you do, the streaming and the rap and uh, does the rap bring in money too? I'm just kind of curious what your situation is like. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, pretty much, it, I mean, like I don't even need to go, like I'll talk about it from time to time. If people say like, they want to do like a, a verse with me or whatever, or, like, Oh, Hey, can I get a verse? Can I have you contribute to this? Yeah. I've done like, I've done DJ drops. Like you are now tuned in, t -t -t tuned in to Justin Murphy on YouTube, l l l l or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> okay. And people pay you for that some stuff like that, you know, voice acting and different. What stuff is that? Like what does that run? What does that run someone? If, if I wanted, if I wanted the custom eggy, like podcast intro, what, what do you charge? Well, for that? I think I had a guy, he hit me up one time and it was like, he had me do like uh, 20 different drops. I can't remember what this was like a while back, but it was like, you know, 15, 20 bucks or whatever for like, that was like what he offered me right up front. So, I mean, I didn't negotiate or whatever. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's fine. Um, That's cool. But yeah, like I don't even really go out like, you know, people just kind of hit me up and they're like, oh yeah, I you know I'm doing this and I like what you do. So, I mean, it's like, I don't even like to go out and like, you know, kind of show myself off and be like, oh, who wants a feature? You know, cause like in my audience, I mean, I have people that follow me about that, but like a lot of people follow me just like for what I kind of am in my, in and of myself and not just, you know, because I do music or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, it's not really something that's going to be like, you know, if I say, if I even, if I put something out like that, I might have a couple of people that'll DM me, but it's not like some big thing for me to like promote that type of thing. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it can depend. The streaming. Yeah. Generally is going to be more for me. What's going to, uh, bring a more consistent income off of, but, but I mean, you know, I definitely, the music is, you know, it's definitely something that is, you know, when it, when it's there, it's definitely, uh, 
yeah, bringing something cool. to the table. So I mean, I'm just intrigued because I don't actually know much about how the indie like rap internet economy works. So it sounds like it's not it's not so much like you're selling albums as much as it's people coming to you with proposals and they pay you for things. Pretty much, yeah. Like a lot of uh, unless you're like really got like real hot popping songs you know what i mean like then you get the streaming money or whatever but even you know like right. shout out to negative xp that's my uh good friend you know like he got a bunch of streams on soundcloud and then they said hold up you know your your, your songs are kind of inappropriate so they like froze his money and he's like still been earning on his streams but like the his his uh payout is like frozen and so that was even going back to like 2018, people said, oh, you know, I like, I pretty much have nothing on Spotify. Like the only stuff that if you look me up on Spotify, it's just like people who I've collabed with who then put their stuff on Spotify. But like, I always figured if I put some of my stuff on Spotify, it might be a little too like, you know, that's, it might be kind of a similar situation where they're going to like, oh, this guy's a little bit crazy. He's a little bit out there. So we don't want to like, we're going to like mess with his income or like, we're going to uphold this or something might get taken down. If it's not like, if it's not up to our community terms of service standards or whatever the case might be. Right. Uh, so it's just like, it's the same thing. You know, if I was on YouTube, I could do super chats and I could do whatever, but like, I prefer like just a straight donation. Cause that's like that straight, you know, that's going to be the most, you know, like boom, like no, no yellow tape, no, this right. and that, you know, so that's kind of the same thing. Like as far as like the streams and the, uh, you know, all this stuff like that, that's cool too. And, you know, and I would encourage anybody that is an artist to take that more seriously than I do. But I just know, like, if somebody comes to me, you know, boom, they're going to send me some money. I'm going to listen to what they're working on. I'm going to do my parts and I get paid. And then I kind of just, oh yeah, whatever you want to do with that, you know, yeah, go, go put that song, go, you know, go have it do, you know, 10 million units or whatever. That's cool. You know, but uh, you know, I just, I kind of just do the, 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 the simplest uh, way of going about it. I yeah. That's, in that's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. I don't know too much about that economy. So it's, it's intriguing to yeah. hear about it. Yeah. Pretty much but with like the indie rap, it's pretty much like the more buzz that you have on your name, then like, you're going to make more money. It's pretty much what it is. Hmm. And it, I mean, it helps to be good at a good artist too, but like people are trying to like get something that's going to draw attention. Like there's people who is, I follow a lot of rap channels and stuff like that. And they might post a hundred videos that you'll never look at, but then they'll post that one video. Right. It's got that one guy in it that you know is good. And it's got like three other guys in it that you might not have heard of, but you're going to go listen to it. And then I'll, okay, hold up. Now this guy's with this guy. And now, yo, this guy's actually pretty good too. So hold on. Now, didn't they upload one from him here? And then that guy's views are going to go up. Opportunities are going up. N numbers go up. And so it's like, right. it's pretty much, yeah. It's like, you know, as they say, they do anything for clouds <laughs> as, as uh, has been foretold. Uh, right. It's pretty much what it boils down to is with with like indie rap and stuff like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I noticed that about like the this new wave of SoundCloud rappers, like the volume is just way higher than any other rappers ever. And it makes sense, right? Because it's like relatively cheap and easy to make songs nowadays and to put them out there and you only need one to blow up. So, you know, all the SoundCloud right. rappers, like the ones that blow up, you look at their like history of SoundCloud and it's like just endless scrolling of, of songs oh, yeah. that they put out. Yeah. And see, that's what I like when I went to it too. Like, I mean, I could sit there and I could just do like, I could do that. You know I mean? I could sit there and just, and maybe some people would like that because then I would probably have a higher output. But, you know, if, like I just, when I, if I do a song, I want to, every time I listen to that song, I want to like feel it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just like blend to everything else. You know, I don't want to sit there and just like hit autoplay on my SoundCloud and just have it sound like it's, you know, 30 minutes of the same song. Cause there's right. some people out there that I follow where they might be good at what they do, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still like, they don't really change it up. And so like, that's for me, like, I want to go every time I listen to that, I want to remember what it was like when I sat down and I wrote that, I, when I did this or that, like, I wanted to have something for me, bring something to me every time I listen to it, you know, I don't want it to just blend together with like all this, like just similar sounding, similar lyrical content and all right. that. Stuff. And you do, do you make your music all solo? Or do you have a team or like people that help or whatever? Well, I mean, you know, I pretty much do everything myself, except for like with the production stuff, I'll work with producers. Uh, you know, there might be people that I work with that are producers that have, you know, some bigger connections, like shouts my boy Chrome, you know, he, uh, I got shouted out. There's a song called shot of flow by NLE Choppa. And he says in the song, he said, uh, I'm with the shit like I'm Toby. Yeah. School shooter named Toby. And that song's got like a hundred million streams or something like that. <laughs> but Chrome produced for him. 
and me and Chrome have been knowing each other too. So like, that's how like NLE Choppa like basically had a line of a song that's like multi-platinum and it's like, it's like referencing me with like the Oregon shooting, but like people don't even know. <laughs> so like, but so, I mean, I had, I started off producing at first back when I did. And I, now I pretty much like, at most usually I like kind of like co-produce. So like if I co-produce, like somebody might be working on something and I'll listen to it and I'll be like, all right, that's cool, but you should change this. And we're going to like add this, or maybe take this out or whatever. And I'll kind of give like a little bit of creative direction like that to kind of have it be how I want it to be. But as far it's like, I just like to, uh, I feel like I'm more creative with the lyrical side of things and kind of, you know, the vocal side of things. Like my creativity has always been a little bit narrower as far as like the actual production, but like, I'll know, I might listen to hundred beats a day, but I'll know like when that one comes on, I'm like, okay, this is definitely the one right here. This has definitely got the elements I'm looking for. It's hard for me to like place it into words sometimes like, Oh, I want this particular instrument or this particular uh, BPM or whatever. But like, I'll know when I hear it, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is good right here. Like that's, that's what's up right there. So then I might work with that one then. And then you know, oh. whoever the producer is, if I don't know him, I might hit him up on Instagram or whatever and, you know, send him some money for the rights or however, however we do it. So. That's cool. So is that how it works? Like you just kind of find cool people on the internet who are doing music you like, and then it's just common in this subculture. Just You just send them a message and say like, yo, I like what you're doing. Want to be the producer on this track. I'll send you X amount of money. Is that just how it works? You just do that in DM and that's like how people roll. I mean, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. There's websites out there like track train beat stars, stuff like that, where you just, you know, you basically send the money through the website makes it like more impersonal, but you get like the, the legal documentation, the licensing, Mm -hmm. So that when you put it up on Spotify or wherever, you know, it, it just makes, it smooths the process out a lot. But, you know, if you got somebody out there that's really doing their thing and they're really just staying consistent, that's the thing too. Like even with streaming and all this stuff, like if you're talking about like producers, people on YouTube, like that's like how Chrome kind of got going from what I saw. Cause I would go on YouTube every day to like look up new beats that were put, getting put out and see like what's going on, what's getting attention or whatever. And like Chrome, He'd be putting out stuff on YouTube like multiple times a day, like maybe a couple times a day, or whatever. Cause I mean, he was still, you know, putting effort into it, but like, you know, he might be putting out stuff on YouTube a couple times a day, like every single day for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, like, you know, he's getting his views up, he's getting his subs up. And then also, when you're putting that stuff out there, people are listening to it on YouTube and they're like, oh, that's pretty good. I can use that for my song. So then they're going to go and they're going to lease it or they're going to want to buy the exclusive or whatever. And so you're making your money off kind of like displaying what you have and putting it out there for the people to, but yeah, so that's kind of how it goes down for, at least in my experience. Now, now that I'm a little more established, I'll go and, you know, my, I might link directly like DMs directly with somebody like right off the bat, but it's not uncommon for me to go and just onto YouTube and some guy might have a hundred subs. He might have a couple beats out or whatever, and they have like 10 views, but I'll listen to it and I'll be like, Oh, this is really good. So let me, let's, let's talk some business. And they might not even be like normal in their you know they're just getting into it so this is not something they're used to yet so then it's kind of it might be a little more complicated at first just the first time talking to them but you kind of get used to it yeah you kind of just figure it out like that yeah yeah okay right on yeah no just a very interesting world um we have a question here from the uh zoom chat uh yeah. the question is can you talk on the great dance of 16 and how that may have uh, how that may have been a turn away from the black pill ideology to many who watched <laughs> And the give great, us some background because I don't know what they're referring to. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if they're talking about the Great Dance of 16 or if they're talking about the uh, the Great Dance of 2017, maybe, because I don't know if there was – I mean, I, I, I had videos of me dancing and stuff in 2016, but I'm going to guess that it was – because that's like – that was the last thing that was ever uploaded on the Archive channel because I think the Archive guy, I think he just kind of went on something else after that. But basically, at that time, um, there was just – you know, I was doing my, my stream marathon, and uh, there had been this person – who was like also kind of like from 4chan uh, who called themselves pizza. And I guess they, uh, I was kind of keeping my location kind of low key. Cause you know, I've been through a lot of shit, you know, and I was kind of just saying kind of out of the way, but they had emailed me and said, uh, you know, I'm, you know, kind of like whatever. So we had some kind of conversation and I realized that they were kind of like close by or not, not like close, close, but kind of, you know, relatively close. Mm -hmm. and they were like, Oh, how about, you know, since like all oh, this 4chan stuff now I didn't really know about like what all they had been doing on 4chan because I'd kind of been off it for a minute but like whatever we basically just kind of linked up and uh 
yeah, pizza came over to uh, my streaming area, my basement, and uh, sat in for this one of the full eight hour uh, sessions, one of the streams that I did. And then we wrapped it up and I can't remember who, but like, you know, I never went to prom <clears throat> when I was in school. Like I, I didn't have the money for it anyway, but I never had, you know, so like it just and came real up quick, with a chat or something like that where somebody real was quick, like, oh, we should. Who's pizza? Uh, what's that? Who, tell, who is pizza? I don't know who pizza is. Just somebody that was like a fortune person, I guess. Like they. It's a chick or what? Yeah. I mean, just, just from fortune. Yeah. Just somebody who. I okay. met up with so for, carry on. For this, Sorry, just... for this uh, stream. Gotcha. So yeah, so we did this stream, and uh, you know that's how we wrapped it up. Was this like this dance? Because people were like, "Oh, that sounds like you know." And because I mean, and I've been doing dances and stuff on this stream. Miss that's what I called it. Like this month, I called it stream miss. Um, so I'd already been doing dances and stuff, you know, if for various reasons. But yeah, that's how we decided to wrap that up, and uh, it got clipped you know by the archive channel and put up whatever which is good because i mean otherwise you know like that i think that whole stream got wiped from like a copyright issue anyway before you know i had some other streams that had gotten deleted uh but for the record just i want to you know make it clear because there's been a lot of speculation for years you know following that we had some kind of you know involvement or whatever no it was just friendship that was you know we were two people that were familiar with 4chan and it was just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything serious. Like it was no serious romantic, anything like that. You know, it was just, just, uh, <laughs> so some people yeah. have, you know, speculated that like, oh, that, that was like why I was like less black pilled, but uh, not really. I mean, there was actually, uh, there was a chick that I was talking to at the time that I never really got like any kind of, uh, attention at that time, but I was kind of keeping it low key or whatever anyway. And then that kind of ended up falling out. And that's kind of like why then in 2018, I kind of ended up getting a little more like fully, like kind of just saying F everything because there had been a few chicks uh, from like when I was doing this initial streaming in like 2017 and like throughout 2017. And then like up until like spring of 2018, there had been a few different chicks that I was kind of trying to court that I was kind of trying to uh, be involved, you know, with, and uh, they all just really kind of shot me down and so that happens to the best of us yeah i mean yeah but then it's kind of just like and i know it's silly to say like oh you know that was such a thing that was you know uh really to have like a uh really weighing on my 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 spirits just to like be dealing with these chicks but it's just the way that i would look at it i'd be like you know i felt like i needed a relationship or i needed a uh some type of romance or something like that to motivate me to kind of pull me up a little more to you know like get me oh, back yeah. on track to like get me back you know and pulled up uh oh yeah there's no shame in that man i mean i think what young men when you're a young man like get getting chicks is like it's it's a huge part of life you know and mm -hmm. that's why i think that's why i think like your story's so interesting that you come from this kind of incel 4chan shadowy uh kind of background and you were so deeply convinced of just the utter impossibility of change and improvement. And the, the supreme irony being that it was that video, which actually <laughs> first got you uh, some, some, some notoriety and some visibility, which in some ways probably played into everything that you would end up being able to do for yourself. So I, I, I feel like maybe the, 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 the question I have to ask towards the end is sort of, I want to let you go and not too long is mm. basically, do you feel like, your story is really a pretty profound example of how, in fact, no matter, no matter how hopeless you feel, you really never do know what is possible and great things can come in life, no matter how truly horrible and utterly hopeless things truly seem. Uh, I mean, I would say, yes, it's kind of something that, I mean, now, like <laughs> there's been times over the last couple of years where I've kind of, you know, gotten pissy. I'm like, ah, oh, screw it. You know, whatever it was, I'm, you know, it's, despite everything, I'm still, I'm still just uh, raging in my, uh, in my neat cave, you know, <laughs> whatever. But I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, definitely. Um, that's one thing you can definitely say for sure is that life is full of surprises. There's no doubt about that. And yeah, I mean, I never in, a million years would have uh, thought that I 
would be having any of this stuff happen that's happened over the last few years. Uh, so, I mean, that's one thing. I mean, because people have told me that has been, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that is definitely what I would say rings true ever since like even early 2017, where I would tell people, I mean, you know, I was just some random guy at a gas station who was doing nothing in life. And then I got this like nationwide attention. And now it's all after 2017. All, and then I was like doing these random spontaneous live streams in California. They had a bunch of viewers. And then in 2018, all then now I had this song that I did in like, you know, just as a little vocal exercise that has put me on international news for, you know, basically I think the last time was sometime this last fall. So it's been, a, I've been able to breathe a little bit away from that now. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you just don't know what could possibly happen. You know, even if you think that you like, you know, even if everything seems like it's all going this way and maybe in the long scheme of things, maybe it does still trend in that direction, but I mean, some random stuff that you would never expect in a million years could definitely pop off. Uh, yeah. So I yeah. would say, I think what, what is also kind of interesting about the black pill video for you and your, your story is the way that I feel like there's another lesson here, which is sort of that, you know, you obviously were utterly convinced that, that everything was hopeless for you, but you nonetheless made something right. And you put it out there, right? Like that black pill video, you, you at least were able to articulate what you were thinking and feeling and you, and you took a slight chance on yourself and just basically put it out there. And I think having that, that it's that creative drive that kind of, no matter how bad things are, you can at the very least formulate how and why things feel really bad exactly. or look or look really bad and put that out into the world. And that for that can often be the saving grace. Like that can often be the thing that uh, people really appreciate and value. And, and uh, I, I really like that aspect of your story that um, precisely what it was that, that kind of made things turn up for you was you taking a chance and being creative and putting out your content, even from this place of feeling like utterly hopeless. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and that's one thing too, something I've said once again, and it's like, I do admit that, you know, it seems, I don't know, I, I still have my, you know, sort of pessimism about certain things, but um, yeah, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. I, say, well, I would tell people, you know, years ago, I would say like, Hey, this, this live streaming thing, it's really opened me up in a kind of way that I, you know, hadn't ever expected to, to like, to be before in the music, you know, and learning more and getting into music more as yeah, it's giving me these creative outlets. So yeah, even when things seem really painful or when things seem really down or when they objectively clearly are, you know, I mean, it's like, we still have that capability. We still can express ourselves in these certain ways. Uh, and so I think that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing to be able Hell to do yeah. that. Yeah. And by the way, I want to make clear to, to you and people listening, I'm, I'm not trying to sell anyone like happy saccharine bullshit either. Like that's not my game at all. I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm putting out, but what I am saying and what I think you see clearly in your story is, is simply that like, because it's not like you're like super rich or super famous or anything like that. It's not like you're, you know, living the high life and as a millionaire right. in Hollywood right. or something like that. So it's like, I'm not trying to like glorify you or anything too much either, but mm -hmm. it's like, to me, the larger point is no matter how shitty things are, no matter how hopeless everything truly seems, you can, creativity is kind of this thing that no one can take from you. And it's like, if you can simply drag yourself out of bed to fucking make something and post it to the internet. Like, I'm not saying it's going to blow up. I'm not saying you're going to have like a totally different life. Like, no, you might very well not. That's only ever a small chance that that happens, you know, but it is a fucking chance. It's always a chance. Right. And so that that's kind of like that. That's, I think, the very realistic kind of message that I like to put out sometimes. It's not promising any like, no, I can't promise anyone you're going to blow up or get any amount of audience or or applause or money or anything. But if you can right. simply drag yourself out of bed and create something that is true to you, that, that feels true. And as you trying to create your best form of something and you just have the minimum amount of courage to simply put it out into the world, then at the very least, you never know what will happen. And exactly, if, you yeah. live, if you can just live another day and do that another day and do that another day, right. every, every time you do that. I've said that, yeah, I've said that before. You know? I'm like, you know, it's just like, cause there'll be times where I just, I like, I get so depressed that it's like, it's, it's a physical thing to me, even like it's, it's like a physical, like, sickness or whatever like i'm not even gonna lie like because i mean i've been like i said the last couple months i've been on the lower 
end of things. So like even today, uh, you know, when we're going to do this, I mean, I kind of just <laughs> laid in bed. I could have got up and got ready and everything a little more soon. Like my, I think my hair was still a little damp from showering, like when we were getting ready here. But I mean, I pretty much just still kind of laying there. And like, I felt like it's like a physical thing, like a physical sort of like drain that I have going on. But I'm like, you know, hey, I know once I get up, I know once we start talking or whatever, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get those wheels turning and I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get into it, get into my, yeah. my zone a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that, uh, I don't, once again, I don't think that it's going to be like, a. there's no real, excuse me, like bandaid fix for life's problems. But I mean, you know, that's just my personal viewpoint on it has been that, you know, given some of these creative outlets to try has definitely made things, you know, uh, has definitely been a positive uh, impact for me in my life. So, I mean, I said it a few years ago, I'll still say it now. I mean, if there's anybody out there that just kind of feels like they're spinning the drain a little bit. I mean, there was times in the past where I was trying to learn. I took like coding courses. I took, you know, I was like doing different stuff, trying to like, you know, latch onto something like, oh, this is going to be something I could kind of latch onto and pull myself up but I just didn't have the same kind of like, I would get there and I might finish a coding course or whatever. And I'd be like, I don't want to tell you the code. I'm like, this is not anything that's going to like, you know, I, I do not derive any kind of uh, joy from sitting here. And it's just like, you know, right. It, I'm, like I'm not, I'm not finding that fulfillment that I want, but you know, when I do, when I work with music or when I, have some fun doing some streaming, maybe do a little dancing, maybe do a little drinking or whatever like that, or you never kind of have like a cheery, jolly kind of thing about it or something a little more introspective, a little insightful on my own part that might be able to help me sort of, you know, dredge up some cold, frozen, locked away parts of me and kind of do a little bit of reflection about things. Yeah. You know, so I would encourage anybody to give it a try at the very least, you know, for anybody out there that's kind of was spinning the drain like I was and still have been from time to time you know it's something to something to consider in any case yeah right on i like that i like that and i don't want to keep you too long but i feel like i gotta ask you just one more question if it's cool with you okay yeah sure did you uh did you watch tfw no gf and what are your thoughts well, as a matter of fact yes i did um i actually i had gotten a screener copy of it to watch like months prior um because you know they said oh we have your youtube clip in here we had the song in here or whatever yeah. And uh, my stance on it was like, no, no, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. And I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. And I didn't watch it. And, and I said, I'm going to go, we're gonna, I'm going to go to the festival. I'm going to watch it for the first time there. And if it sucks, I'm going to crash the festival. I'm going to like be in my seat, you know, like me and Alex and whoever else like in our seats. Like if it sucks, if it's cringe, I'm going to start ripping my clothes apart and I'm going to like, just go crazy. I'm going to be running around nude and whipping my nuts around and just like, you know, crash the whole thing okay. as protest for being cringe. But of course, obviously the festival did not go down as planned. Mm -hmm. And even when I was in my hotel in, in, in Texas, they were like, oh, well, you know, I, I remember Alex, she was like, well, if you're just kind of chilling at the hotel, I mean, hey, you can still watch it. We got it right here. Use the screen or whatever. And I still didn't watch it. <laughs> but then I actually watched it for the first time. Uh, Dick Masterson, Ethan Ralph of uh, the Kill Stream, and some of their associates invited me to watch it with them so i actually watched it for the first time with them and to be honest you know i don't know if that was the best idea <laughs> you know no, no shade to those guys you know uh much love to them but uh it was like i'm sitting there and i enjoyed the film but i think i enjoyed the film probably in a way that maybe some people wouldn't just because i knew everybody that was in it so it was kind of like oh hey yo it's my boy charles and oh hey yo there's biddy and oh yo it's cotton bot or whatever hey i know those guys I mean, I know Sean too. I don't, uh, uh, shout out to Sean. Uh, we haven't really talked as much uh, in, in a while as uh, me and those other guys, but uh, you know, so you enjoyed watching it. it with like Dick Masters and Ethan Ralph, whatever, you know, they were kind of like talking a lot, you know, we were sitting there watching the screener. So it was kind of like, it kind of got blended together at some points. So I might've, you know, maybe had some more quotables just kind of watching it in silence on my own, but I enjoyed watching with those guys and I did enjoy the film, but I do understand a lot of the criticism that people have had about certain things, why people think it's kind of crappy like this or, or, uh, or it's a hit piece or whatever. Like I totally get people's viewpoints on it. I just look at them like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to watch this movie about them guys I know on Twitter, you know, and see what's up with them. You know, that's, that's pretty much. Cause I mean, none, no, there's nothing in the film that was like new or really revolutionary to me personally, anyway, for, like in my perspective, so I just kind of, for what it was, 
I enjoyed it. Yes. So you enjoy it. Why do you, if you don't mind me asking, like, I'm kind of curious why, where, why do people hate on it? Like what's the big, what's the big hate point in, in your world? Well, I mean, it could be for, like I said, a number of reasons. People just felt like it was sort of, you know, they came into it expecting something maybe a little more uh, cohesive is, is the word. I'm not really sure. It's very like, you know, like I said, it's very like, uh, there's, there's words here. There's film words that I might not like know, but it's sort of like, you know, we're talking about this guy. We're talking about these guys. We're talking about that guy. It's not exactly like, you know, well, you know, in 2011, well, I mean, it has these little bits in there where it's like, you know, for a screen, it'll be like, oh, and this is what this means. And that's what that means or whatever. But right. it's not like, I know what you're that's saying. Not the, that's like the, the reaching full, you know, concept of it. It's not like a documentary about memes necessarily is it's more kind of like breaking down these guys' yeah. experiences and things. So that's kind of part of people like, oh, you know, where's the memes? This is the, it says it's a meme movie, but it's like, it's about these guys, you know? So that's one thing. Some people were saying, oh, you know, it's showing these guys. Now everyone's going to think that, you know, everybody's, you know, whatever they have personal gripes about maybe how the people in the movie look or how they behave or, you know, like the certain parts of it that you know, it's, it's, it's putting people representing people in maybe a bad light to some viewers. And they say, Oh no, Same. that's why these guys are weirdos. We're no, I'm not, I'm not like these guys. Uh, okay. There's I was different, I, there's different I, things yeah. about it. Uh, and like, I understand like where some of these people are coming from for sure. But like I said, from my personal viewpoint, I just kind of looked at it as like, okay, you know, it's a movie about these guys I know and seeing yeah. what's up with them and them talking about what they're going through. And so, yeah, I was kind of surprised that there, that there were some negative reactions from those crowds just because I, as someone who's somewhat, I, I have some weird internet adjacencies to those crowds, but I'm, I'm quite distant from those crowds myself. Mm -hmm. uh, like I certainly don't know any of the guys in the movie, uh, but I'm, I'm not too many people removed from some of those crowds. I was surprised that there was negative reactions because from my perspective, I thought it made all the dudes seem really cool uh, to, to, to a provocative degree. Actually, I was kind of surprised how cool it made everyone seem. And I, and I think uh, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool and, and kind of interesting and, and courageous in a way because normal society just likes to kind of uh, demonize the, these types of young men. So mm -hmm. when I heard that there was like, you know, some, a, a little bit of negative reactions from, from certain people in that world. I was kind of surprised, but in retrospect, I shouldn't be surprised because of course, in these pockets of the internet, of course, there's going to be different kinds of antagonisms and, and backlashes. Uh, I think if you're going to make a movie about this type of crowd, like, of course, there's going to be different types of all types of different reactions. It is ultimately the internet, you know, right on. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like, I get, um, that's one thing too about it. Yeah. Like, Cause to me, yeah, it didn't, it wasn't like a demonizing in any like, but there were some people who were like, Oh no, no, no. This cop bot guy, this guy's a weirdo dude. Like who's this guy he talks about like Thule and he's some kind of like, what, like, well, I think we're some like, you know, and what these, and these guys are out there out in the snow and they're shooting guns, like some kind of mad, you know, to me, like the shooting in the snow, I was like, when I, when I came on and we we're doing the viewing, I'm like, Oh, this is Kino. Oh yeah. This is, this is like, this is, this is, uh, this is cool. This is, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is entertaining to me. But of course, yeah. If like some soccer mom who's like got certain ideas in her head, like if all of a sudden she's like the nerd guy with his gun out or whatever, she's probably gonna like, you know, kick the screen over and scream. Or, so I mean like, okay. Yeah. I kind of get that. But like, uh, yeah, but like fuck soccer moms. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's right? true. I mean, yeah, it's just, it, <laughs> It was, uh, I guess, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how uh, how history uh, remembers the film. You know, like I said, I kind of have my take on it. I didn't really sure. like. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I will say, though, is that, you know, with the movie that I was in more than, this was, I, I just had a little piece, you know, of contribution to this film. But uh, they, I'd actually done filming out in uh, California for the Pepe the Frog documentary, but I don't think that's, that hasn't gotten funding yet, as far as I know. So it showed at a couple film festivals, but that's kind of whatever now. And uh, originally I had a bigger part in the film, but between like the Hong Kong protests, utilizing Pepe the Frog and stuff like that, it kind of got whittled down. But I tell you, <laughs> if they ever make a director's cut, you know, I was, we were going like karaoke bars in LA and stuff like that, partying, drinking on the finest. Uh, we were drinking like Japanese alcohol, these like karaoke bars. I mean, uh, you know, they had like, they filmed me like playing World of Warcraft and like doing like Takashi 6 9 raps. Of course, this is before he snitched. So, you know, for, for the streets, I can't be, you know, that's, 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 you can't be doing that no more. But, you know, but it was like, there was a lot more going on. But I think they kind of trimmed me down to just like some talking about memes and stuff like that. But 
yeah, that now that's uh, but I don't know if that film will ever really get mass whatever mass production pro- distribution. Yeah, well, that's that's like the that. thing. It's it's hard it's hard to actually successfully produce these types of movies about about these different types of oh, yeah. subcultures. So that's why I feel like I don't know. I I I guess I've got to know Alex somewhat well, and I like her, and I, I'm kind of surprised to see uh, some of the flack that she's gotten because you know as as you were just saying my hat's off to her for even getting this film done and getting it out there which is is pretty hard as you as you say a lot of people who try to make movies about these different types of topics never even pull it off yeah. so well i know the guy yeah, cuz the guy who was doing the pepe the frog movie like he actually had some more connections i think even than alex did to like where they get sit downs or but like you know they at the time they were pretty much i don't remember, i don't i never even have seen the final frog movie that they ended up coming out with you know i saw that like the reviews were above average and uh the director you know, hit me up and said that he might want to you know have me on his like contact list for something in the future maybe but i remember when we were talking about it at the time when they were trying to kind of like start getting some of the funding wherever they basically would sit down and they'd be like all right well you're gonna say these guys are all murderous and awful and they should all be destroyed right and he's like well no that's not what it's about we're just talking about like the full spectrum of it and you know and they would say well get out of here then you, know, you gotta you gotta make sure to say right. that these are bad guys um, but I, I see there's one thing here in the Q and A. It says, uh, "Can you comment on Jesus versus the Decepticons?" Well, yes, I think there is uh, an archive of my doing whatever Egg Wars that was, where I did a live reading of that. Um, but yes, over my years, there's been a few times where this paper that I wrote for my senior uh, English class, where now I was in, I was in uh, alternative school, which is basically like prison school. And my final <laughs> project that got an A plus and it got hung on the wall, I, I did like Jesus versus the Decepticons. It's kind of a uh, Reddit looking back at it now, but basically it's like this story that I wrote just like just spontaneously. Uh, I used to, you know, I had like memes and shit incorporated in what I would write in school, even back like in, in those days. But basically I wrote the story about like uh, the Decepticons from the Transformers, like came to like take over earth and like Jesus was there and then like he fought them and then uh, it basically has like this abrupt anticlimactic ending, which is uh, tethered with World of Warcraft Arena. Because when I was in high school, I used to be really into World of Warcraft Arena and I would post on Arena Junkies and all type of stuff. So we used to talk, we used to have all that lingo that, you know, all this like, you know, it's, it's basically, it was like uh, a little bit of uh, African-American vernacular English is that is that the is that the right term to use is that the sure. properly politically correct term but basically you know, it was, it was kind of like uh you know it was like all these World of Warcraft arena like pasty nerd guys like me uh you know that were all just like sitting around and you know all talking like it was you know like like man, how you might see people comment on you know a basketball player nowadays but it'd be commenting on like uh you know somebody in an arena match like bruh trash as fuck you know whatever like whatever <laughs> whatever lingo we had like and this is like an essay assignment kind of, people would be like you know everything was <laughs> i don't know how would i put it you just i guess maybe you just kind of had to be there i guess it was all just but like this very, is a school this is a school assignment that you had to yeah. do for a grade i did yeah well actually and a little bit of extra credit <laughs> uh lore here i was actually never supposed to graduate high school like i said i was a delinquent and uh you know like a low iq and everything like that and basically, uh, they this alternative school. They needed to have people graduate in order to maintain their funding. Uh, so I had like a zero GPA, like straight up zero. Like I never <laughs> did a single assignment ever. Uh, so I was actually scheduled to have to repeat my senior year at that rate. Uh, but they were just like, "Well, you're one of the few guys here that doesn't have a like pending criminal conviction or whatever." And so we and we we don't think you're going to do any crimes. Uh, so we just need you to graduate. So they just like straight up had me do like one assignment for each class, which like I said, I did the paper for English and whatever else, like just one test for this and like make sure that I wasn't totally mentally handicapped. And then they just gave me like straight A's. And so I ended up graduating high school with like a 3.8 GPA. So nice. you know, to the American school system, you know, that was kind of like, <laughs> that was kind of like my uh, affirmative action for me being, uh, for nice. being a, a good guy who, you know, had didn't have any felonies. So thank you. Well, for someone who self as someone who self describes as low IQ, you sure seem uh, pretty clever and pretty good at uh, winning various types of games in the end. So <laughs> good for you, man. I just want to thank you once again for coming on today. Uh, I, seriously, this was a really interesting conversation. I really like your story, man, and I like yeah, I like what you're doing. I'm I'm really glad to see you out there doing your thing and having some success with it. It's qu- it's quite a story, man. Yeah, I was uh, I was glad to tap in because now I'm 
I'm up. I'm fresh and clean. So I'm going to do my own live stream tonight too on my channel. So awesome, look dude. Up egg white on YouTube. I got like 7,000 something subs on that now. Uh, I haven't done anything. I, I've been offline for the last like three weeks now, but I'm kind of up and at it. You know, my boy, Jay Murph, he got me up. He got my gears rolling today for his, uh, for his show. So now I'm kind of awesome. ready to rock and roll. So, so for anyone out there Murphy. listening, right? Anyone out there listening right now, if you just can't get enough, go over to Eggie's uh, stream and just, <laughs> well, just a little gonna bit. We're going to lock in. The green screen will actually be used. You know, we're going to – I got some Japanese sake. I'm going to pop a bottle. Uh, nice. Yeah, we'll listen to some music and stuff. So, yeah, I think, I think I'll do it. I think I'll do that tonight, yeah. Awesome, dude. I might I might literally watch. I'm curious to see how you run your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my thing. Uh, Give me some tips, some tricks. You know, if there's any aspiring uh, live streamers out there in the audience that want to see what the tips and tricks, you know, of how I, how I handle my business – there you go. Being, uh, a kook. Right on, man. Well, good luck to good luck to you on everything you're working on. I hope to uh, hopefully a year from now I'll see you on No Jumper or some shit like that. <laughs> well, we'll figure something out. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna keep on uh, doing my thing. You know, we got some some hot projects that I've been working on, collaborating with some people, and that stuff should be coming out sooner than later. So just uh, keep tuned in. But shout out to everybody. Right. Thank you for uh, for all the viewers out there, and uh, take care, everybody. Take it easy, Aggie later all right thanks everyone for hanging out i appreciate it uh go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already i actually have to be somewhat quick tonight i gotta i gotta something i gotta do in just a minute so i just want to thank everyone for being here uh sincerely i always love always love uh hanging out with you all and uh big shout out to the patrons big thanks to the patrons always try to thank the patrons and uh yeah this was super interesting i'm gonna i'm gonna be thinking about this story for some time it's it's honestly fucking inspiring i'm not gonna lie uh this is cool yeah. So, uh, all right, folks, you can also subscribe to the podcast, other life. If you want to listen to this on your phone later, if that's more convenient for you, I'll upload that to the podcast, uh, soon enough. So I'm going to shut off the stream now and I'll see you all soon.